Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to discuss GATE 2024 question paper. This video contains answer to the theoretical questions. For numerical questions, please watch part 2. This year's question paper was very interesting since several new types of questions were introduced. And also, the answers to many questions requires application of knowledge and fundamental understanding rather than just information. If this trend continues, then students really need to understand the fundamentals clearly to answer both theoretical and numerical questions. I hope this solution video will be helpful in better understanding some of the key concepts of polymer science. So let's start with the first question. In this question, we need to identify the polymerization method to prepare phenol formaldehyde resin. There are two types of polymerization reactions addition and condensation. Addition polymerization can be divided into radical and ionic polymerization. And ionic polymerization can be further divided into cationic and anionic polymerization. Monomers containing double bonds undergo addition polymerization or we can say that vinyl monomers undergo addition polymerization. Whereas the typical requirement for condensation polymerization is that Either the monomer or the repeat unit should contain different functional group which can participate in the reaction to form the polymer. And at the same time also eliminate a small molecule. As phenol formaldehyde is prepared by the reaction of phenol or substituted phenol with formaldehyde and a water molecule is eliminated during the reaction, this polymerization reaction can be categorized as condensation polymerization. So the correct answer is A, condensation polymerization. Option B and C are incorrect because vinyl monomers are polymerized using addition polymerization that can be either radical or anic polymerization. And option D is also incorrect because only cyclic monomers with strained ring undergo ring opening polymerization. Benzene rings are highly stable and do not undergo ring opening. In this question, you need to tell the thermodynamic order of melting phenomena in semi-crystalline polymer. A semi-crystalline polymer shows three thermodynamic transitions, glass transition, melting and crystallization. Thermodynamic transitions in polymers are divided into first and second order transitions. First order transitions are any change brought by heat which leads to change in phase like melting, freezing, boiling, crystallization, and condensation, the phase change also leads to abrupt volume change. Whereas in second order transition, there is no or little heat transfer and abrupt change in volume, but heat capacity does change. For example, glass transition temperature. So the correct answer is B, melting is a first order transition. In this question, we need to find the relationship among the number average, weight average and Z average molecular weight of a polymer having same number of repeat units in each chain. As we know, polymer sample almost always consists of chains with different lengths as which are represented by M1, M2, M3 and so on. For a polymer sample with equal length or same number of repeat units, is also called as monodispersed or ideal polymer and the value for all the chains will be M. Now if we replace M1, M2 and M3 by M in all the formulas of molecular weight, we will find that they will also lead to the formula of number average molecular weight. Therefore for polymer samples with equal chain length or same number of repeat units the number average, weight average and Z average molecular weight will be equal. Also, the simple logic is different formulas of molecular weight of polymer exist to understand the effect of different chain lengths. If all the chain lengths are equal, then there is no need of different molecular weight formulas. They all will be same. So, by both the methods, the answer is B. In this question, identify the nitrile rubber monomer. Nitrile rubber has many names as it is also known as 
नाइट्राइल ब्यूटाडाइन रबर एन बी आर बुना एन एंड एक्राइलो ब्यूटाडाइन रबर इट इज़ अ सिंथेटिक रबर प्रिपेयर फ्रॉम एक्राइलो नाइट्राइल एंड ब्यूटाडाइन सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज डी ऑप्शन ए बी एंड सी आर इन करेक्ट इन दिस क्वेश्चन आइडेंटिफाई द कंपेटिलाइजर फॉर पॉली एथलिन एंड पॉलीप्रोपलिन ब्लेंड वी नो दैट पॉली एथलिन एंड पॉलीप्रोपलिन बोथ आर पॉलीओलिफिन पॉलीमर्स एंड बोथ आर हाइड्रोफोबिक एंड नॉन पोलर एंड दे डू नॉट फॉर्म मिसिबल ब्लेंड बिकॉज दे आर क्रिस्टलाइजेबल पॉलीमर एंड थर्मोडाइनमिकली दे फॉर्म सेपरेट क्रिस्टलाइन डोमेंस पर सो टू फॉर्म अ मिसिबल ब्लेंड अ कंपेटिलाइजर इज एडेड विच सोस कंपेटिबिलिटी टू बोथ डोमेंस Among the given options, except polyethylene block propylene, all other options are polar polymers, which will not have compatibility with the non-polar polymers like polyethylene and polypropylene. Thus, these cannot be used as compatibilizer. So, the only option that can be correct is C. In this question, you need to answer. What is the reason for polymeric materials to show diswell behavior? So, when a force is applied on a polymer melt to flow through a die opening, the polymeric chain starts to deform and orient in force direction. When force is removed, chain again go back to initial shape. This behavior of polymer is called stress relaxation, and stress relaxation occurs mainly due to elastic deformation of polymer. as only elastic deformation is recoverable viscous deformation is permanent deformation and it is dissipated as heat so the correct answer is d in this question we need to find the temperature range in which thermoforming operation is performed is it above tz ntm below tz ntm or in between Thermoforming is a process where plastic sheets are molded into a product. To make plastic product, sheets are first heated so that the sheet become flexible and stretchable enough to take the shape of the mold. That means the temperature is higher than TZ because below TZ polymers are glassy and it will break if stressed. It also must be below TM because at or above tm plastic sheets starts to melt and it won't be able to hold the shape so the correct answer is above tz and below tm next question is which reaction leads to feedstock recycling of polyethylene terephthalate feedstock recycling is also known as chemical recycling or ternary recycling during feedstock or chemical recycling pet waste is degraded to pet monomers or oligomers typical reactions for converting pet waste to monomer or oligomers are hydrolysis ammonolysis glycolysis or methanolysis because through these reactions backbone chain is broken in the given options except hydrolysis all other options are mainly for side group modification or modification of main chain rather than degradation of main chain so the correct answer is option c okay so in this question we need to identify the polymer that can be prepared by ring opening polymerization this is a msq question as you can see in the question is an r is written that shows correct answer can be more than one There are two requirements for a monomer to undergo ring opening polymerization. First, monomer must have strained cyclic ring. Second, heteroatom must be part of the ring structure. Both aniline and styrene monomers neither have strained ring nor the heteroatom is the part of the ring structure. So these two cannot be polymerized by ring opening polymerization. Only polylactic acid and polycaprolactone can be synthesized by ring opening polymerization as monomer of both the polymers fulfills requirement of ring opening polymerization so the correct answer is a and b
this question is new for gate and it is very interesting question here we need to find the expression for the probability of second reaction which is reaction of m1 radical and m2 monomer to solve this question we have to consider the statistical model for radical polymerization that means once m1 radical is formed it will either react with m1 monomer or m2 monomer similarly when m2 radical is formed it will either react with m2 monomer or m1 monomer so the probability that m1 radical reacts with m1 or m2 monomer is 1 so we can write the probability of reaction of p1 and p2 occurring is 1 and the probability of p2 can be represented by this equation now if we can write p1 and p2 as this since rate will depend on rate constant and concentration of radical and unreacted monomer and after simplification and replacing rate constant k with the reactivity ratio and monomer ratio by f we find the equation that matches with option b so the answer is b in this question we need to match additive in pvc compounding with their functions polymers are generally mixed with different types of additives to achieve the best performance for example lubricants are chemicals that helps to reduce friction between surfaces in contact examples are aliphatic esters silicones mineral oils extenders are secondary plasticizers they commonly added with primary plasticizers to reduce cost in general purpose flexible pvc examples of extenders are naphthenic hydrocarbon aliphatic hydrocarbon chlorinated paraffins and others heat stabilizers are used to prevent degradation of pvc by heat especially during processing heat stabilizers act by stopping thermal oxidation heavy metal salts of lead tin barium and zinc are used as heat stabilizers other than these organo tin compounds are also used as heat stabilizers plasticizers are small molecules added to pvc to improve flexibility and to reduce brittleness phthalate carbonates phosphates anhydrides fatty fatty acid esters are used as plasticizers so based on this information the correct answer is a this question is from polymer properties if you know the basics you can easily answer this question nost impact strength test determines the amount of energy absorbed by a material during fracture this absorbed energy tells about material toughness which is an indication of material's brittleness or ductile nature in this test a v shaped notched sample is mounted on a machine then a weight pendulum hammer strikes the test specimen impact strength is calculated by dividing impact energy by the thickness of the sample so unit 2 matches with the notched impact strength flexural strength or bending strength is defined as material's ability to resist deformation under load flexural strength can be measured by 3 point or 4 point bending test during the test a rectangular sample is placed on two supporting pins at a fixed distance and then force is applied it is calculated by given formula this gives flexural strength in newton per meter square which is also called as pascal so unit 3 matches with flexural strength the dielectric strength is defined as maximum voltage that can be applied to an insulating material before it goes into breakdown dielectric strength is calculated by dividing the breakdown voltage by the thickness of the sample the unit of dielectric strength is volts per meter or volts per centimeter so unit 4 matches with dielectric strength viscosity is measured by dividing shear stress by shear rate which gives unit of pascal second so unit 1 matches with complex viscosity so the correct answer is option c in this question we need to find the relationship between 
melt flow index, molecular weight and viscosity. This is a multiple choice question too. To answer this question, first we need to understand what is melt flow index. Melt flow index is a measure of how many grams of a polymer flow through the capillary in 10 minutes at certain temperature and load. Higher the MFI value that means viscosity is low. So the material coming out through the dye is high. Similarly, if MFI value is low that means viscosity is high. Viscosity is directly related to molecular weight. Higher the molecular weight, higher is the viscosity that means MFI value will be low. So option A, C are correct. MFI is reciprocal to molecular weight and viscosity. In this question, we need to tell the reason why layering of crystalline structure of biaxially oriented polypropylene film shows high clarity. Biaxially oriented film is a very important material for packaging, labeling and lamination application. Biaxially oriented film shows superior mechanical and optical properties. The films are uniform in both the direction as we can see in the image. Crystals are small and uniformly distributed which leads to better clarity. The better clarity is due to reduced variation in refractive index and light scattering. So the answer is both A and B.